Hi, Glenn. Uh, what is the focus of your work these days? Hey, Dia. So I'm a, a better software architect for over a decade. I hate to date myself, but there it is. Um, and I work now at a place called Rally Health, which will soon be joining the Optum Digital family, a part of United Health Group. And it's it's big. It's we've got 700 engineers. We've got hundreds of microservices. Uh, we've got four portfolios, which are collections of products. And a lot of what I do is kind of at a high level, right? Sometimes I'll get embedded in a team because there could be a scalability or a stability issue with a particular service or services. I help them out a lot. Try to encourage 12 factor. Uh, approach to uh, designing services and just make sure that they have something that, you know, scales well and yet still can accommodate the kind of competitive feature velocity we need. But then other times I'm focused more on uh, help improving um, how the engineers design and architect. We don't architect for them. We ask them to architect, but then we mentor and make sure they're on the right path and that you know, the designs and the architecture documents they come up with actually add value. So that's, you know, a lot of what I'm doing these days. And Glenn, what is the motivation for your talk? That's a great question, Dio. So I cannot tell you how many times I've been in different companies and when it came time to deal with tech debt, you know, the, the product manager wins Business says, oh, we don't need that. You know, that's not critical. Are we going to die tomorrow? No. Well, then let's postpone that because we have these important features. You know, we've got sales to make. That's always kind of the priority. And it, you do that long enough and you end up with uh, engineering that's very demotivated, very frustrated because the tech that's actually getting in their way. Engineers want to be productive. They want to be able to implement these things, these cool features that they're excited about. Usually they, they're very excited about their products and they want to advance it. And when the tech debt piles up so much that it really starts to get in the way and obstruct them from that, they're frustrated about that. They don't feel good about themselves. And it can be a real problem. I think it's a serious problem that, you know, plagues our industry. And so that's why I was very excited coming to Rally Health. They've really got a great solution for this. You know, it doesn't require charismatic leaders or champions who are just going to prevail, right? It's just a systemic approach. If you follow these practices, you're going to get there. And it's really very impressive. In fact, uh, more impressive than, say, the only other systemic approach I know about, which is the Google SRE book. They talk about also an approach to managing tech debt. But I think the this approach is better than that. And so I'm very excited about it. And I want to share that with the IT community at large. I think they they'd really be able to benefit from it. And how would you describe the persona and the level of the target audience? The, um, um, you know, if you're a junior coder, you're probably not going to care because you're like, tech debt, what's that? I just need to learn React, you know, or something like that. Uh, but once you've been developing long enough, you know, the years roll by and you start to see, wait a minute, you know, we're, this is happening again. Oh, things are just slowing down as the services get bigger, as the technology gets older, things are just slowing down more and more. And now I'm frustrated. Why does it take me so long to get, you know, a change checked in? Why does it take so long to get this feature or fix implemented, tested, merged to main and deployed? Why are, why are there so many obstructions to that? You know, and after a while, it's like, it's like sitting in traffic all the time. You're just so frustrated. You're, you know, you forget where you're even going anymore. You know, you've been waiting in traffic so long. So, so I think, you know, the more senior engineers and architects who have seen this happen, who have been there, will be the audience most interested in, you know, a way to deal with it. You don't have to just give up. You can actually address it. And what would you like this uh, audience to walk away with from your presentation? You know, there's no secret sauce here. There's no, you know, buy now to learn more. You're going to get the whole, you're going to get the whole recipe. You should be able to do it. You should be able to implement this or something like it in your own organization. 
and you know hopefully make a change hopefully actually get tech debt you know in a manageable way i mean are you going to have zero tech debt no of course not it's not about having zero tech debt it's about having something that's manageable and uh, glenn overall uh, what do you feel is the most important trend in software now i mean that's a very open ended question dio i mean i i don't know about the most important but one thing that i'm excited about is um what i call graphql at the edge and what happens is when you when you, an organization goes from monolith to microservices right you know there are pain points with microservices it's not a cure all it's not you know uh, a miracle cure right there's going to be pain points to it and then you're going to start going how do i solve that maybe you regress back into a monolith or maybe you say oh there's actually different types of microservices and let's think about the separation of concerns what types of microservices should be responsible for what kinds of things and part of that is an interest in the edge edge computing now originally that term referred to the edge of the internet and that was about cdns or content delivery networks i'm actually referring to here the edge of your data center or your um uh, uh vpc you know what happens there and these are like orchestration services that make it easier for your front end apps your mobile or your web apps to be able to use your apis you know in a way that keeps their code base small right instead of having a lot of stitching code aggregation code in your typescript or your you know objective c or your you know android java you're you're just making one call and it returns exactly what you need you just bind it and you just finished so how do you do that well the service on the other end right that's not really a data service that's a really an orchestration service that's calling data services and packaging it all together and returning it to you right and then you know the other thing that is exciting is you know there's this thing called graphql which is more about it's very a uh, front end focus right it's it's about making things easy for front end developers to kind of query exactly what it is they need so i think that uh, graphql as an orchestration service is kind of an exciting trend and i think you know it's already getting a lot of uh, adoption and i think it's going to be continuing to get more adoption so thank you thank you so much glen